I'm Bridget Pettisey, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the weeks of December 18th to January 7th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. We're back! I hope you all had a good holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year's. Happy January 6th. Insurrection! (laughs) Happy Festivus. It's a made-up tale. Happy Kwanzaa. It's a total fabrication. I hope you all had a relaxing, joyful time with your families. You got to eat and be merry and drink and do all of the things. And now we're back into the dumpster fire. It is overflowing. I feel like it's going to be a pretty dumpster fire-ish year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Leading up to 2024, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a dumpster fire. <laughs> we'll be here with you along the way, folks. We will be warming ourselves by the fire of dumpsters all over America as they burn, <laughs> as we enjoy what it's like to live on the Decline of an empire. I see good things about Hitler also. Join us at Fetacy.com and you can subscribe and get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. You also get a cool community. You also get, um, we're doing writing prompts now every single day. That's been amazing. There's lots of people joining us. You can sign up. If you're more of a Substack person, you can sign up there. But if you want all of the video and the content that we release behind the paywall, go to Fetacy.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Touch our bells and buttons. And tell your friends about us because honestly, I hear more often than not about people hearing from this from their friends. We had a very Darrison bite. Let's go hit Terrace Terry's and those for the bit. They had the pit. It does seem to be the way people hear about it more than the algorithm. I heard about it from my friends. (laughs) Yes, you did, Sam. (laughs) My nemesis is at it again. Elon has reinstated Better Fetacy. Yay! <laughs> is there an applause? Yeah. That was such an exciting way to start the new year. Yeah. They banned our parody account, my parody account, which is better at being me than me. It's like me with no insecurity. And the for some reason, it got banned. Like, no reason. It was the stupidest thing ever. But everybody loved this count. And it's great. great we, I have been pleading with Elon on Twitter Nightly regularly. Nightly phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Nightly text messages. <laughs> and DMs. <laughs> Nightly, um, hey, customer service representative Elon, could you please (laughs) restore my parody account? We've been begging. And then, lo and behold, just appeared. I have it on good authority that Elon pressed that button himself. (laughs) Thank you, Elon. Thank Thank you, you, Elon. Thank you, Daddy Elon. It seems like you are now a friend. Now I can fake my death at last. I couldn't fake my death until my parody account was back. Because now my parody account can take over my account and no one will be the wiser. Just be you online. (laughs) (laughs) And that's it. So we thought that there, I think there was some other stuff going on. Like the Twitter files are still going and it's, it's so, so much. I have to, I haven't even had time to do a deep dive into all the stuff that has been revealed, but it's basically everything that you already know. Your government's spying on you. They're trying to influence elections. There's an uncomfortably cozy relationship between big tech and the government. And they've tried to influence the COVID, all of the propaganda around that. Nothing that would come as a surprise to anyone who watches this show. (laughs) (laughs) And anyone in the mainstream media just treats it like a nothing burger. And so nothing will change. Mm -hmm. Although you will feel a little bit more free on Twitter.com. According to That's my take. (laughs) Nothing will change. Everyone will remain dug into their little camps. And the mainstream media will continue ignoring the new media because we are eating their lunch and we'll keep going on. 
Except when they make stories out of one tweet by some random person. Right. Or they decide to like go after Joe Rogan because they want to destroy the final boss of new media. Mm -hmm. That's a Melissa Chen joke. She always says Joe Rogan is the final boss of cancel culture. (laughs) (laughs) It's like Bowser. Uh, So go follow Better Fetacy at Twitter.com. Yes. Beyond parody. (laughs) Greta Thunberg. How dare you? Defeated MMA fighter Andrew Tate. You're on the Tate train. In an epic battle of the wits and online trolling, which led to Tate's arrest. The Matrix has attacked me. I mean, we live in a South Park episode. The world around us has all completely turned to shit. This is really the best. Yeah. This is a South Park episode because both of these people are caricatures of people. Yeah. Neither one of them is an actual. They're like two dimensional versions of what you would think a young autistic environmental activist is. How dare you? And what you would think an incel king, like misogynist. I don't even know what he is. There are no men in the world with balls. What? What is? What is he? He's a heavy, light heavyweight kickboxing world champion. Oh, maybe he's not an MMA fighter. He's some sort of kickboxing guy. Yeah, but what does he do now? I don't know. He's just in prison. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, he tra- traffics women. Um, <laughs> no, he's he's in like the manosphere. He's yeah. one of those dudes. It's like Anna, my friend, had a great tweet where she was like, "Men will make fun of women for believing in astrology, and then they'll pay Andrew Tate however much to is, help them escape from the Matrix because that's his whole thing." Ah, uh, is like we'll get you out of the Matrix. Okay, aliens are putting out a brainwave that keeps most people seeing a false reality. Aliens or robots from the future, whatever. Well, we have to explain what happened for those people who aren't very online and have no idea what we're talking about. So Andrew Tate tweeted at Greta, Greta I have Greta Thunberg. Uh, I have 33 cars. My Bugatti has a W16 8.0, oh whatever, quad turbo, two Ferrari, whatever. This is just the start. Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective <laughs> enormous emissions. So one of the funniest tweet about him it was like, you don't think social media is bad, but Andrew Tate would be trying to sell ecstasy at his cologne kiosk in the mall. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then Greta responded, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com. You're a victim. And then Andrew posted some sort of video oh, about God. Uh, in response to that. Release some greenhouse gases. The mainstream press is commenting on the extensive fact. car collection. With I have small dick energy. Gender. It's 50-50. But, and uh, make sure that these boxes are not recycled. To try and convince you. And then. Why does he touch his nipple when he mentions her in that video? I don't know. It's so weird. He just. I, first of all, I bet he leases all of those cars. <laughs> I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Yeah, right. And that video was the worst WWE promo video I've ever Awful. seen. <laughs> what is he wearing? Awful. What is he wearing? Uh, and I love that the best clapback he has for a child is basically, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Tay needs to human traffic some better joke writers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, so then he was arrested Because supposedly the story was he was arrested because he has pizza delivered in the middle of this video. It's not true. No, but it was a great internet story. Yeah, he has pizza delivered, and it was a Romanian pizza company, and they can it confirmed his presence in Romania, where he was then arrested for human trafficking. It was fun internet folklore for five minutes, Uh which is how long internet folklore. It probably still exists, but it ended up not being true. And he was like, "Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to recycle these pizza boxes." This is the real Pizza Gate. <laughs> this this is the real Pizza Gate, folks. And then after he was arrested, Greta did tweet, "This is what happens when you don't recycle your pizza boxes," which was pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she should have tweeted, "This is got- what happens when you fuck with the WEF." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, come for Klaus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be coming for Klaus's girl. 
come for Klaus, you'll get schwabbed. You'll get <laughs> you'll get disappeared in a Romanian jail. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is like any guy like this who's like it, it only makes him more truthful in the sense of his followers because if you're like I'm calling out the Matrix, man, right. and I'm pushing back against the mainstream, and now they want to disappear me. Bro, you've been bragging about how you basically psychologically abuse women. You call, call it make them fall in love with you, but we know we all know what that looks like. Um, so, and essentially convince them to be cam girls, like openly talking about this on your website. It's one of your selling points of how you can get women to fall in love with and then they do whatever you want. You are like, you've been bragging about this. Yeah. But now he'll be able to be like, I'm a victim of the Illuminati or whatever. <laughs> Lizard Illuminati. It just makes it, it makes it even worse. I bet his ego was actually hurt by... That small dick energy. Yeah. I bet it was. I think that Andrew Tate looks like the kind of guy who will probably be selling a penis pump in 2023. Like erectile dysfunction. ED. Often called impotence. I took one look at him and I'm like, he looks like a classic douchebag. Yeah. Have we lost our douchebag radar? This is what bothers me about the modern era. Trump looks like a scumbag. Tate looks like a douchebag. And who was that? Avenetti, oh, that yeah. lawyer mm. for that the left was like in love with. Total scum, an Sam obvious Bakeman scumbag. Freed. <laughs> yeah, Sam Bakeman Freed, clearly a scumbag. <laughs> Have we have we lost our radar? So are we so tribal that we cannot see a blatant scumbag when they're standing right in front of us? <laughs> I know. Well, it's. It's online too. It it kind of buffers that immediate like ick that no, you get with someone on, I get in it person. Online. Well, no, you but yeah, obviously, but you have a very very good radar for that shit too. Russell Brand, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just a woman thing. Yeah, maybe men because they aren't like being prey preyed upon out right. in the world they right. don't have that radar they don't so recognize like, oh, he seems like a cool guy and then it's like yeah or a human trafficker they don't recognize <laughs> predators in the way that women do <laughs> yeah <laughs> they don't women know. though women were like avenetti uh, chris cuomo right because that, that was, was like chris cool to cuomo. be it's an insult to your fucking people it's like the n-word for us scumbag yeah they ride the wave too once it starts to pick up speed of like oh he's he's like the cool guy we're all in love with now then the women jump on board and you're like what are you doing fauci uh people were talking about how they wanted to have sex with fauci <laughs> parade of morons <sighs> our lovely congress uh -huh. well republicans finally elected a speaker of the house it took what 15 votes i think we have 15 rounds yeah it took days and they really had a hard time with it <laughs> it's the hardest i've ever seen anyone in congress work honestly <laughs> they're like we're getting out here before the weekend it turned into like parliament <laughs> They were jeering each other, <laughs> booing. There was uh, standing ovations for people just voting present, which seems very strange what? to me. Yeah. I'm not That's smart, weird. so I don't get the whole like ability to just abstain from voting and they get and people were applauding them <clears throat> last night. I'm like, oh sure, they get an applause when they don't vote and when I don't vote. <laughs> it's a scandal. <laughs> I get called an, uh, an usher in a fascism. <laughs> And that's their fucking job is to vote. <laughs> yeah. It's literally what they're supposed to be doing there. Yeah. So like there was kind of a rebel force within. I was actually glad to see the dissent. At least it's not like everybody's forced to like just be in lockstep. And there was some debate. And I mean, there was a lot of grandstanding. Essentially, there was a little rebel group of Republicans led mostly by Matt Pedo Pedo Gay. He's not really a pedo, but I think That's he was clear to that. The pedo gates. He he looks like he has a good deal on a boat for me. <laughs> or like 
as somebody said, and if not that, at least a timeshare. <laughs> Why are you always so tan? He has like always looks like he's just back from his fake tan and his teeth whitening appointment. <laughs> I've been tanning my whole life. <laughs> I'm just going to make fun of people for the way they look from now on. We're, this we're this bringing, whole show is going to be. We're bringing it back to the roots <laughs> of just making fun of people for their looks. Yeah, so some of them were demanding things they likely wouldn't get, like term limits. And it was it was just silly shenanigans where they can fundraise off of and say, I voted, I pushed for term limits. And a lot of people use it for their newsletters and their campaigns later on. Mm -hmm. Some people actually, maybe five of them had like impactful holdouts. But for the most part, it was just a lot of self. Some people were like, this is what it looks like when these Americans stand up for the other Americans who are they represent. And I'm like, these fucking people are so self-serving. They don't care about Joe back in their constituency. It's they're no, not. They're just trying to angle for like a, power, a power, a piece yeah. of the pie. So there's something they want that they can hold out for. And in conclusion, Read my lips. This is just the Bannon wing flexing their muscle. And then there was this whole thing where like Trump saved the day, which is just them trying to spin some narrative that he's a deal maker, even though he's not. And the the base actually didn't want McCarthy as the speaker. So I don't know why he thinks that's some impressive win anyways. Today, I'm very proud of myself. Mm -hmm. It's also dumb. Although I did end up watching it because it was kind of funny. There were some great photos that came from last night. One was Marjorie Taylor Greene with Donald Trump Jr. on her phone. And she was trying to get to this other representative. And she's like, I've got Donald on the phone. And he's like, don't do me like that. And like they got into it. And and then there was oh another guy who there's a picture of one of the um, representatives being restrained from going after Matt that. Gates, which is a great image that will live in infamy. It was kind of fun, though. Congress can now be called into session or something like that. It, like couldn't without yeah i couldn't but when you actually look J jake tapper was doing the history of how there's one that went three months yeah in the 1800s when they actually governed <laughs> yeah when they actually worked it never happened it was weird people were really acting like this was the end of democracy i'm like this actually seems like this democracy is probably good for democracy. yeah every single one of you out there in the nation if you're watching Democracy died tonight. I think the biggest takeaway from this, aside from I don't really care, um, everyone's <laughs> full of shit in the House of Representatives because they all say, oh, we're for transparency. But the reason you were getting so many great shots last night is because when there's no Speaker of the House, there aren't as many limitations on like the angles that they could get. And so C-SPAN had like amazing footage and we and people were like this. Sh we should be you had access to people making deals and getting in arguments and all the stuff that you don't normally see. And we as Americans should demand that we get to see that all the time. C-SPAN should be in control of the camera, but they're normally not mm -hmm. and they won't be anymore. And you should call your elected representatives and tell them if they believe in transparency, they should let C-SPAN control the cameras. Not gonna happen. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> then we have, we're all gonna die. <laughs> it's a very uplifting <laughs> message that we spread here in Dumpster Fire. Jane Goodall spoke at the WEF saying none of our climate issues would exist if our population size were that of 500 years ago. We cannot hide away from human population growth because, you know, it underlies so many of the other problems. All these things we talk about wouldn't be a problem if there, were, if there was the size of population that there was 500 years ago. Oh, big shock, the gorilla lady wants us all dead. <laughs> yeah, and apparently the population 500 years ago was like 500 million people. So <laughs> 7.5 billion people just have to die in order for that to happen. <laughs> she, she and Bill Burr are on the same page. <laughs> Look, 85% of you have to go. She had sex with a chimp one time and now she's a climate expert. <laughs> 
I probably shouldn't be making fun of an old lady having sex with gorillas. <laughs> but what else are you going to do? It's funny that she's speaking of the WEF because that's actually what the WEF wants. wants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. 7.5 billion of us to be dead. <laughs> I know. It's not. It's just an odd statement to make when you don't. That's not a feasible solution. Let's come Other up with feasible killing solutions. Other than killing 7.5 yeah. billion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I am getting a little bit unsettled by the <laughs> amount of times people are like, if only 7 billion of you were dead, <laughs> then we'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be floating that as like a hypothetical. Especially not on the heels of a pandemic. Like, oh, not, not, not enough people died in that. We really do need to invest in the Canadian suicide pods. <laughs> <laughs> we joked like two years ago when we started this that we're a couple of news cycles away from if you care about the environment just unalive yourself a couple of days away from the headline or the opinion piece if you really care about the environment kill yourself <laughs> and here we are yeah Take a minute to thank our sponsor, Sheath Underwear, created by an Iraq war veteran to help keep his parts dry in the desert and not stuck to his leg. The Sheath Underwear dual pouch system is revolutionized your ball holding capabilities. It takes the family jewels and cradles them gently, separating the genitalia and keeping things separate from the legs so that you're not chafing and sweating and getting stuck and having to rearrange all the time when you're out there in the world doing your thing for 2023. They also have a female line and they have very cute little booty shorts. It's Modal fabric, so it's super breathable. It keeps your pH nice and balanced. They've got sports bras. This is just my house underwear and great for traveling go to sheathunderwear.com use the code dumpster and get 20 percent off your entire order that is sheathunderwear.com use the code dumpster and get 20 percent off your entire order support the businesses that support us the link is in the description below everything is racist the racist roots of fighting obesity apparently this article is like two years old yeah i was looking at this morning it's we probably covered it yeah, I think we kind of did. We covered at least something similar. I was looking at the date and it's from 2020. And then it's like over the holidays, all of these, it's a scientific American and they all take out their, their greatest hits and they put them out so that they, whatever clickbait they get, they can recycle that mm -hmm. content. Even if there are racist roots of obesity, which... It's questionable about how scientific that is. Why would you still be arguing that, like, because in this article in particular was about black women, why would you still be kind of advocating that, like, black women should be fat? They're not advocating, but why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want, it still why feels. Why would you see that as a health crisis? Yeah, why and would. that should be, like, addressed as, to, yeah. to help black women? No matter how we got here, how, which is, I'm not saying it's not important, it's still more important that we address the health crisis, because it's like four out of five black women are considered obese. Mm -hmm. That's what I was reading in the article. So this article came out, and it was then generated a lot of tweets and whatnot about it, and people were saying that obese is a slur word there was a woman who oh, yeah. said that obesity is a slur and even put a little asterisk in the word obesity right i mean this is how chubby whites get back on top <laughs> <laughs> they're like at last i'm a protected class and that's where fat girls come from new year new fat uh <laughs> goodbye white privilege hello white castle <laughs> I'm going to fat my way to the top of the pyramid. <laughs> yeah, I've talked about this before. It's not fat phobic for people to say that obesity is a health crisis. And maybe some people are fat phobic. I'm not fat phobic in that I'm not afraid of fat people. I am afraid of the fat person inside of my me <laughs> who's dying to come out. <laughs> 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 what kind of <laughs> what kind of nonsense does it to start the new year with telling people oh, this is this is the one time people feel motivated let them get their gym memberships and feel like they can change their life For don't take month. that from them <laughs> i'm not afraid of fat people i'm faster than them <laughs> oh boy and the little rascals that they ride around on 
Yeah, and if you, so what? You can't use the word oh, I've got an arsenal of words that I can use instead of oh, rotund, hefty, chubber, sturdy, <laughs> zaftig, big <laughs> bone. <not> word. <laughs> Whatever happened to being big boned? You can, Cartman, or I'm you not had bad on big boned. You had <laughs> birth and hips. You can take away obesity, but you're not going to take away our ability. To talk about how we have a crisis in this country. This is like me when I got sober. When I was 19. And I was like, yeah, I could spend all day talking about how my fucked up upbringing and this and that. And all the things that led to me being here in rehab. But at a certain point, I have to take responsibility for where I am. And figure out a way to improve and get out of that situation. Thinking about all the ways in which this is that and this and that is not, it's not helpful. Yep. We, we have to get better food. We need to get exercise. People need to take responsibility for their own shit and stop being fed this victim narrative from every single freaking outlet online. Yeah. Stop telling people they're helpless. Here, That's, here. Stop it. I agree with that. Anyway. Chew on that. All right. Well. Chew on that, fatties. <laughs> 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 Sam, you set me up for that one. I did. I did. <laughs> and then we have R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Author Susan Meachin died from suicide two years ago, except it turns out she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this story is so whack. This is such it's an insane. internet story. It's so weird. So apparently this author was supposedly bullied into suicide by her writing community or something along those lines. Yeah. First of all, how are you going to let book nerds bully you into suicide? Come on, Susan. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then she like, come on, Susan. She just came out as being alive. <laughs> But Rolling Stone did this she whole article rose from about the it. Dead. Now they're going to actually bully her into suicide, and then life will imitate art. But the weirdest thing is, too, is after like a month after her supposed suicide, she <laughs> rejoined the like book cl- like club or whatever it is online, her online group under a pseudonym, and then was interacting with people about her death and <laughs> like wanting to like someone being like, I don't know if I can keep running this group anymore. And she was like, I'll run it for you in honor of Susan. Oh, it's my like, God. <laughs> this is literally hiding behind the trees at your funeral. <laughs> When you fake your death. Wow. Come on, Susan. (laughs) Oh, Susan. Louder and sadder. (sighs) It really is. It's like going to your own funeral and hiding behind the trees. Yeah. Only she's going to her own funeral and interacting with everybody. Right. And standing up and speaking about how great Susan was. (laughs) She's the the boy who cried suicide. (laughs) She was so bored in the afterlife, she was on TikTok the entire time. I mean, it is funny and just shows you how addicting the online stuff is that she's like, I'm going to unalive myself and that's how I'll get this book done that I've been trying to write and then I'll just go offline and one month in, she's like, I can't take I can't it. can't do it. Right. And then supposedly she was like, I never said I committed suicide. My daughter made that claim, but she was on there interacting with people. No, she's a lying whore. And they were trying to drive her like last, her now supposed she's last whore. book published so romance novel is they were trying to drive those uh sales yeah she's a lying whore and she's probably fat too (laughs) oh she's a romance novelist of course she is (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna fat shame everybody into getting in shape for the new year's bring the shame back me included bring the shame back shame let's take a minute to check the weather from deanna alvarado del Italia y bueno es que tenemos el ingreso de humedad todavía desde las costas del Pacífico esto nos traerá probabilidad de precipitación para el día de mañana y pasado mañana like subscribe and comment touch my bells and buttons this is your chance folks to hit that like button smash the patriarchy and smash the subscribe button <laughs> and if you want to no, smash the matriarchy touch my bells and buttons <laughs> Gently touch my bells and buttons <laughs> and smash the patriarchy. <laughs> Get wrecked, big tech. 
Oh, boy. We like these stories just, again, so people know what happened to us. So people will know the world we were in when they're in their identification collars. (laughs) (laughs) I just had such an image of that. (laughs) Face recognition tech, it gets mom booted from Rockette's show due to where she works. So this was so weird. This mother was going to the Rockettes show at Radio City Music Hall with her daughter and her like daughter's Girl Scout troop. And she was stopped at the at the security because they use facial recognition tech software. And she was flagged because she's an attorney who is currently involved in a lawsuit in another state with the parent company of the people who like run the Rockettes show or the Radio City Music Hall or something. And she was prevented. So fucking creepy. Sounds like a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a conflict of interest. She can go see a show. Sounds uh, I, like a conflict You of know interest. that it was like some Mission Impossible shit where she really was trying to spy. Like, what is the Rockettes a front for that they have <laughs> facial recognition? I've just been watching a lot of Mission Impossible. I got the whole box set. And when I heard this story, I was like, this is Mission Impossible. There's This is some weird Mission Impossible thing that went wrong. What is the Rockettes a front for? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do you need this at Radio City? Is it just everywhere now? I don't know. Or at least it's starting to be. This is where corporate fascism in China and in the U.S. are very similar. This China shit isn't coming here. It's here already. We're already living in this, like, everywhere you go, you're facially recognized. Right. And you're going to be banned from places based on your job or certain just criteria that you have no idea You're like, oh, this is Bridget. She tweeted this about that. I mean, I definitely wouldn't get in China, that's for sure. Which one of you decided to go and start bad-mouthing the Chinese government? No, you'd be arrested immediately. (laughs) How much money stands to be lost that the Rockettes needed to boot this poor lady and her children? (laughs) I want to know more about this lawsuit. Well, her children were allowed in. It was just her. She was not allowed in. It was, and it's a lawsuit against the parent company for something entirely different in a different state because it's in New Jersey, not New York. So creepy. And we thought bulimia was the biggest problem at the ballet. You can read minds. <laughs> <laughs> the making of a eunuch. <laughs> Prince Harry is looking more like a little bitch every day. <laughs> That's a great headline. <laughs> I made that one up. Thank you. What is this actually about? Okay, so, yeah, so the he- the real he- headline is Prince Harry says he called his therapist after a furious bust up with his brother. So they had some, like, this was the, the book part of is the book. coming out. Yeah. Yeah, it's being leaked to the press, parts of it. Spare, the book is called. Yes. So online, there was the meme going around that was like, spare me. <laughs> spare me my life. <laughs> <laughs> be my life. So one of the stories was that they got into a scuffle and Prince William punched Prince Harry and he fell and then he landed on the dog bowl and he got cuts and bruises from the dog bowl that broke when he landed on it. Like, wasn't Harry in the army, first of all? <laughs> yeah. I guess he was like, he punched him and then he was like, hit me back. And Harry was like, I'm not going to hit you back. And <laughs> great reenactment. <laughs> I'm not gonna hit you back. <laughs> and he like said something about his necklace. So Harry's necklace was trending for a while. Harry's necklace broke in the scuffle. Yeah, it was one of the Queen's pearl necklaces. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a dog bowl, it was the bowl that Megan makes Harry eat out of. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but this is why we have Andrew Tate because of bitch ass pussies like this. I am literally the world's first trillionaire, Elon. We have, and I know people will say, oh, he's defending his wife. But again, people are blinded by narcissistic sociopaths because they're in tribes. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like two sides of the spectrum. You have this eunuch who gave up his guns (laughs) and his family. (laughs) And then you have this incel pimp. Who human traffics women on the other side, really feeding off of that. Yeah. Unic energy. (laughs) (laughs) Unic energy. (laughs) 
<laughs> We're really back in prime form for the year, I'd say. They used to have turned into the Walking National Enquirer. Ugh. And unfortunately, it's the only way they know how to make money now is to just like drop some dirt about the royal family themselves and then be act like they were victims and then rake in the cash. They're just like milking that sweet, sweet victim tit as for as long as they can. And then they were blaming Catherine and William and William, William for for, <laughs> for when <laughs> are we calling Kate Catherine now? I don't know. She's a queen now. That's her. Well, she's not a queen yet. <laughs> uh, she's almost a queen. They were blaming them for him wearing his Nazi costume. Right. And that's initially what caused like the hard feelings and the the beginning of the rift was Harry felt like they like left him out to dry. It's not like they made him wear the Nazi costume. Apparently he had two options and then asked them for their opinion. <laughs> And it was, one was the Nazi costume and the other was, I know you're thinking, what could be worse than that? It's even worse because it was a pilot. <laughs> right. Before we knew what the other costume was, we were like, what was the other costume? To be clear, it was a Nazi pilot. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he went and said, hey guys, should I be a pilot or a Nazi? And they were like, go with the Nazi. <laughs> So maybe they were trying to, you know, undermine Harry. <laughs> I just love that that's a question you even need to ask. And you can't, and then you agree and put on a Nazi costume. <laughs> like, they were probably like, go with the Nazi. Kidding. Sarcastically. He's like, oh, okay. We were like, what, what was, was the like, other costume? what was it? Like, KKK? <laughs> or right. White Hood? It's like, actually Hitler versus yeah. just a Nazi? Someone in the writer's room was like, blackface? <laughs> we were like, looking for it. It's like a pilot. We were like, dying laughing. I'm like, what? <laughs> a Nazi pilot. I love that we're supposed to feel sorry for freaking, yeah, the name Spare is obviously after like, he's the spare heir and... We're supposed to feel sorry for Harry, who's the second in line to be the king of England. Uh-huh. Lettuce is $7. <laughs> he lives in a mansion in Montecito. We are supposed to be like, poor Harry. Poor, poor Harry. He's had such a hard time. Look, he has had a hard time. So have all of us. All yeah. right, Harry. You eunuch. You used to be so cool when we partied adjacently. <laughs> in your Nazi <laughs> costume. <laughs> hey. I wasn't there when <laughs> Harry had his Nazi costume on. I know. He was a, like, he's like a combat veteran. What the fuck is he doing? I don't know. It's so sad. It's really sad to watch. Never trust a ginger. They have no souls. <laughs> You're not God. <sighs> no one should give them any attention. And certainly not any money, you absolute fools. I know. They're taking your money, your poor ass who's sitting in some... <laughs> The janky ass apartment somewhere, drinking your wine out of a box all alone. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to spend money on these two whiners. <laughs> then we have a yacht for every pleb. Leo kicks off 2023 with bikini clad beauties on board luxury yacht at St. Bart's. No one should take this guy seriously about climate change ever again. <laughs> if you care about the environment, you wouldn't regularly be getting photographed on mega yachts that guzzle gas. I mean, I've always joked that like he does act like he knows the world is ending because he's like, fuck it, I'm just going to party and bang a bunch of models on a yacht. Fun coupons. Yep. No one's going to listen to me. Poor little Leo. But then don't make a movie about the end of the world and be a supposed climate change activist. Just bang I mean, your models and shut your mouth. Maybe he thinks by stealing the reproductive years of all of these young ladies, he's helping with Jane Goodall's <laughs> mission to depopulate the earth. That's true. It's an excellent point. This is my theory. That's a good theory. It's a good theory. <laughs> maybe he's like, I'm doing the world a favor. You're welcome. A yacht for every one of Leo's models. <laughs> dumpster diving. At last, what's next? In the dumpster. <laughs> My hands are so cold, I can't even feel them. You can't even turn them into feral claws. <laughs> I can't hope looking at me like, what is she doing? Police in Scotland have rebranded pedophiles as minor attracted people. This is kind of true, right? 
Uh, no, it is true, but it's supposedly, <laughs> you know, uh, there's like shades of it or something like there's some sort of different there's categorization of pedophilia. Yeah, what there's the fuck is going on in Scotland. I don't know. It's like trying to help people who are minor attracted people rather than using actually the term for convicted pedophiles or actual sex abusers. I don't know. What we learned in 2022 is that there are pedos everywhere. Yes. And that we should not be normalizing it by calling them something other than pedophiles. Minor attracted peoples. It makes it sound like... Like it's a disability. Yeah. Yeah. Throw them in the volcano! (laughs) (laughs) Leo is just a minor attracted performer. Oh. (laughs) His bar is at least 20 or 23, Yeah, at least they're legal. Yeah. And pretty legal, not barely. Yeah, or is it just going to be like food attracted people now for the fats? <laughs> <laughs> Notice how the pores is everywhere. Uh huh. Everyone mm-hmm. calls them the pores now. I know. That just shows you the power of the dumpster fire. <laughs> it burns so bright and spreads into the world. Uh, we need to bring shame back. Yeah. The shame in being attracted to children, the shame in being fat, <laughs> the shame in being Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> Planned Parenthood is marketing abortion as self care. They want me to be pro life. They Seems want. Like they're me. driving people towards it. First of all, this image is very strange. What is going on here? It looks like an aborted fetus. <laughs> <laughs> How many arms? Is it? Exactly. It's like it's like limbs and arms and eyes, and they're all in weird places. And I think it's supposed to be a, a fat woman hugging herself <laughs> with blue hair, but I'm not sure. Which also tracks. This is not self-care, guys. No. It's not like getting a mani-pedi at the spa. Yeah. Going for a massage to relax. You're not just like drinking tea on the beach. I mean, it's certainly not baby care. hey <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we have two men set themselves on fire by accident while trying to burn down an immigration center. Darwin Awards right here. Yeah. These poor hardworking immigrants are watching these two f***ing morons set themselves on fire. And they're like, well, we'll do a moron set themselves on fire. And they're like, well, we'll I think we'll be fine here. Uh (laughs) It's like so stupid. You watch them. They're like flinging gas around like in pirouettes with certain doing circles. And then the guy likes it while he's standing over it. Oh. And And he runs away screaming. And he didn't tell his friend that he was lighting it either who was like dancing with the gas. (laughs) And then all of a sudden the fire goes up. We need some self-immolation classes. These guys were like, oh, we thought this was just a police precinct and we were in, we're, this, uh, wait, we thought this was an Antifa rally. They're confused. Yeah, it was a very, very sad bungled operation. I want to know who these people were and what they were doing. I just imagine the immigrants like shaking their heads. It seems like a. That's not how you set a fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, really, this is not, it's embarrassing, guys. Breaking Bridget. Cardi B is telling it like it is, and Bridget agrees. I love Cardi B when she goes on these rants, because she's still, like, one of the people in a weird way, even though she's not anymore. But it was, like, the old school, like, where's my money when she was ranting about taxes? We were like, yes, welcome, Cardi B. Welcome. And she's le- take they're taking even more money from Cardi. And she went on this rant about how much everything costs. That's why I made that lettuce joke. She's like, I get every week. They look at, I look at my expenses and like lettuce was $2 and now it's like $7. And people were saying, oh, you're rich. And she called them out and said, if I'm rich, like, how are you doing it? How, and this is my question. How are any of us doing it? Everything is so expensive. I got a freaking email from exploitative SoCal gas about how my they're like hey heads up your gas bill is going to be more than double 
than it was a year ago. I mean, all of these, the the energy is like yeah. a mafia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're just price gouging everyone. And it's the same with gas. It's ridiculous. And I feel like a lot of people have used like COVID and all of that. There was a time where it was like, okay, things need to get more expensive because of supply chain and whatnot. But now it just feels like they're also just abusing that and mm-hmm. using it to just keep prices high in certain places or also just keep these standards in place that you don't need to have anymore. Mm-hmm. How is anyone doing it? Food is so expensive. It's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Everything's expe- Everything. Everything's expensive. Yeah. It's extortion. The energy is extortion. And it's like the green agenda. I feel like they're, I, it does feel creepy. Like they're trying to starve everybody and like, what are you going to do? What am I going to do if I get that email? It's like, hey, or you could just freeze, I guess. Good luck. Yeah. And like, sorry, your live bill's going to be double. What are you supposed to freaking do? Yeah. I have a baby. I'm not going to let her live in a 42 at night. And everyone's like, oh, it's California. It's a desert, idiots. It gets cold here at night in right. the winter sometimes. And these houses are not insulated well and they're no. not built mm-hmm. for the cold. No. And they're like hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's the green agenda and this embarrassing belief that we all need to live off like solar and wind energy. Which we still don't have the infrastructure for. No. It's all just. This just feels like the final nail in the coffin of the middle class. Yeah. And it's it, like the pandemic. Was it Carol Roth or book about the the transfer of wealth? Yeah. During the pandemic. Yeah. And then there are people who buy houses for $90 million in cash. <laughs> yeah. There's, I mean, that's that's the disparity. Yeah. The wealth disparity is so, there's a, uber rich and then there's the rest of us. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know how anyone's doing it. And I don't know what to do about it. It just breaks me every week seeing my bills just exponentially, not to mention inflation. So your dollar's worth less. Everything costs more. You're not making any wage increases. What is, what is going on? Yeah. A fun coupon. How come everything's so expensive? And is it going to come back down or are all these greedy f- just going to keep milking the tit of the middle class? We need someone to explain this to us. Someone like Carol Roth. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> happy new year. To cleanse your palate. We have the internet is glorious. Tell your joke. Why are you thinking so funny? Why? Because. <laughs> yeah. If you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. Hey. If you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. Last episode's comments. Carol Lee Pirro said, Boomer here. I just turned 73 and you girls have kept me laughing for three years. Thank God for you. And you are correct about most of the rest of my generation. Uh, we uh-huh. actually, the boomers that watch our show are freaking hilarious. There's a lot of boomers in Fetacy.com. Yeah. And they're the best. Yeah, they really They are. really feel more like Gen X than they do boomers. Uh-huh. Semi-old gamer said, here's to hoping the AI that destroys humanity has a sarcastic personality, preferably an English accent. <laughs> <laughs> it probably will. Cole Pick said, I'm not sure how smart it is making fun of the future king of Mars, but it certainly is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You think my poor ass is going to be on some plane to Mars? Oh, and then a bunch of people pointed out that they even timestamp it like 1701. They were like, the fact that Elon released a poll less than 24 hours after they said this, which was when you were like, we're about two seconds away from them releasing a poll being like, do you still like me? Yes or no. And then he released that poll about uh, whether he should stay the CEO of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Elon does watch Dumpster Fire. Uh-huh. I feel like he would appreciate it. Well, you just predict people very well. I yeah. like to think he watches Dumpster Fire. Let yeah. me have that. Baby. <laughs> All right, he does. He's absolutely a fan. <laughs> he, he gets a kick he's out obsessed of it. With it. You calling him his ne- your nemesis? Yeah. he gets off on it. That's like all these rich dudes. They get off on poor chicks. Uh huh. <laughs> well, we're poor enough for all of them. <laughs> Matt Shaw said, I thought for sure you were going to say that the great white shark gets more coverage than the black tip reef shark. And that's why people are outraged <laughs> over the clearly racist <laughs> sharks and shark week. <laughs> that's funny. 
And then Everyday Anarchy said, I send links to friends. I use Dumpster Fire as a judge of character. I'm forever suspicious of anyone who responds with something other than hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but we are for you, our beloveds. All right. Fantasy news. Join us at Fetacy.com, the community of all communities that proves the communities on the line can be great and fun and loving and supportive. We have uh, workouts for all the ladies. We're getting back in shape. hey it's a new year. We also release the unedited version of Dumpster Fire every Sunday, the day before. And on Monday, you get an ad-free version of the edited. So you get lots of free content. We're doing Write Club, which is a writing prompt every day. So if you want to, you know, just put yourself on some kind of writing discipline, this is a good way. And tons of people are engaged you can also just hang out in there. People people have made like real life friends. I've made real life friends yeah. with with many of the women and men in that community. So it's our it's our nice place away from all of the chaos. And it's uh, we were going to raise the rates and then we didn't because <laughs> everything's so expensive. And I'm more I'm more concerned that you can just join the community than I'm a horrible capitalist. Yeah, but. We just want people. We want the bar to be pretty low for entry. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to raise the rates. Everybody's struggling, and I'm pretty aware that I'm not like a necessity. So <laughs> we just <laughs> we want you to have an escape with us. Make sure you shop our merch at Brid- BridgetFetacy.com if you want to get a dumpster fire sweatshirt or a mug or any kind of merch of ours. You can go there. Deep on the IRS if you're not too afraid to buy that one. We're always releasing new stuff, and you get 20% off all of your merch if you are a member of the Fetacy community. Also, another huge perk. And Walk-In's Welcome Now has video. If you're here on YouTube, you probably noticed that our podcast is now video. Dumpster Fire is a podcast. Many of you download it and listen to it. I still laugh at the guy <laughs> whose comment a couple weeks ago is like, oh, the Mexican video lady, the Mexican weather report makes a lot more sense now that I saw the video. <laughs> I'm like, that'd be so random. <laughs> You're listening to this on audio and then there's just a random Mexican weather report every week. <laughs> Hilarious. It's worth a watch. Please download it, like it, whatever, if you, wherever you get your podcast. And then we are on Substack, where it's bridgetfetacy.substack.com. You can see lots of my writing, Geriatric Mommy, Right Club is also there if you're more of a Substack person for subscribers and factory settings the podcast is there with my husband we did one last week about willingness and we're going to be doing it weekly now and you can get that wherever podcasts are available and we are doing special episodes answering questions just for our subscribers. So another reason to subscribe, it will be in both places. Don't worry. And then our weekly newsletter where everything that I just mentioned, you can get in your inbox very nice and succinctly at the end of the week. So you don't have to run around all these places and look, you can just click from there. So subscribe, it's free and it's fun. And I blob Blah, blah. I did a spectator article for the magazine. It's online now, a junkie's pride. Uh, talking about addiction, recovery, and junkie pride. And I was uncomfortably honest, as usual. So I loved that article. It was so good. Oh, yeah. People people are responding to that one. Thank you for being here with us. We're glad to be back. And we're going three times a month. We're back, right? Yes. Yeah. We're going three times a month. We're back to not every other week. We're going to do three. We're going to give ourselves a weekend off. And that's it. We're just happy to be here, as usual. Thank you, Better Fetacy, Dave Yates, Ben Howe, for research, writing, and for editing. Thank you to Luna for my face. She really did a great job on what was pretty rough looking this morning. <laughs> and thank you, Sammy Flaps and Folds. Thank we love you. you. Bridget. We need some conspiracies. I'm we sure do. There will be many. Start compiling a list. Yes. Thank you, Cousin Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Sheath, for being our sponsor. We love Sheath underwear. Go to the links in the description below to find anything that we mentioned. And thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for all of our audio equipment. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of December 18th to January 7th. I'm Bridget Fetacy. Now make us rich!